Good evening. Bona Sera. Uh, it is just past 6.30 here on the East Coast. Uh, today I'm going to hit the ranked ladder for the first time in a long time. Also, uh, just as a quick programming note, I apologize for the kind of lack of jaw flap, uh, and if my audio sounds a little echoey. Uh, I'm currently wearing a mask in my own home, as we have a, a sick patient here in the home front. So, yeah, the skeleton home stream I've been waiting for. Thank you, yeah, yeah. But um, I'm currently sitting in front of my webcam with, like, a mask on, so you're not going to get too much jaw flap out of me today. And if, uh, I guess let me know how my voice actually sounds, or if I just sound like I'm speaking through a, a sock, because I basically am. Not much I can do about it, but uh, that's how it is. So yeah, hello, I'm going to be playing the Ranked Ladder today for the first time in, like, six months. I do sound muffled, I'm sure, because I am muffled. Um... Once the room airs out a little bit more, I might be able to drop it, no problem. Actually, it's probably fine at this point by now. Bon, bon hasn't been in here in a hot minute. There we go. That probably sounds a lot better, right? There we go. <clears throat> okay, so, I'm hitting the ranked ladder today with a team that I whipped up based on uh, how I saw Melbourne pan out recently, which I'm told is a different game, Skeleton Bone Mask. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably be fine. Um, th this room gets decent ventilation. Uh, okay, so as everybody knows, I I love Torkoal. We've seen what Torkoal and Lilligan can do. Um, I guess I get just at a high level. This team is called Go My Scarab. I for some reason really really wanted to end up using Rabska, um, which is a Pokemon they introduced in Gen 9 here. Uh, it's a Bug Psychic type. It has access to a signature move called Revival Blessing, which is a one PP move. That lets you bring any guy back from fainting with 50% HP. Uh, pretty cool move. We won't be using it today, most likely. Because uh, Rabska also actually gets a secret second signature move. Uh, didn't used to be a signature move, but in this generation, due to the reduced Pokedex, it is. And that move is Speed Swap. Uh, so what this does is it very plainly just swaps your speed stat with that of the target. And so the thought process here is going to be that he pairs up with this other new guy, Iron Boulder. Uh, so new that they don't even have art for him on Showdown yet. Uh, but Iron Boulder is a new Future Paradox Pokemon that was added in the Indigo Disc DLC. They're Robot Terrakian, who was one of the uh, three Musketeers from Gen 5. Uh, traditionally a Rock Fighting type, they are now Rock Psychic. Um, give the, you can give them a booster energy. In this case, they are statted out so that they get a 30% boost, boost to their attack uh, instead of their speed stat, because we're going to be wanting to swap our speed stat later. Um, but I'm getting into the weeds a bit. The The high level here is that this team is a pretty much a hard trick room team with a couple of fast options for either before or after trick room goes up. Um, but you're probably not going to be playing in the fast mode for too, too long. It's pretty much just a way to catch up after you run out of your turns of trick room. Um, and because trick room is the only meta, I, or the only archetype I know how to play. <laughs> so we're going to see how it works out. Um, so we know what Torkoal can do. We're, we're here for Torkoal. Torkoal has to get the ribbon. I have to get the Master Ball rank on Torkoal uh, for this to work out at all. Um, so they've got Eruption, Heat Wave, Earth Power, Protect, Max Special Attack, Max HP, Min Speed, Charcoal Hold Item. You know it, you love it. It's good. Uh, Lilligant we saw in the various Battle Tree climbs, what they can do. Their speed doubles in Sunlight. You give them a Focus Sash. Um, they have access to Leaf Storm, which is a pretty powerful Grass-type uh, attack. Sleep Powder is somewhat useful. Max Speed, Max Special Attack. Pretty straightforward. Trick Room ends. You send Lilligant out as your last Trick Room guy faints. They can use After You to make uh, Torkoal move right after them with their awesome speed stat of 312, which is faster than even Boosted Iron Bundle. Like, this is faster than pretty much anything in the game, it, when, once you double it. Barring, like, absurd Tailwind cases. Uh, but you, you're typically good to go with this guy. Um, is VLC too loud, by the way? I feel like it might be. We're gonna lower that a bit. There we go. Uh, Indeedy, we've also seen these two in the Battle Tower, uh, back-to-back. -to -back. I'm on the fence between Covert Cloak and Life Orb, uh, on Hatterene. Covert Cloak is really good because you can just stand her up next to anybody, and she's, like, immune to Fake Out Flinch. This is a new item they added in this generation, I believe, uh, which just makes you immune to secondary effects. So, like, if you get hit by Fake Out or Rock Slide or whatever... You're not going to flinch. Uh, you can't be like frozen or paralyzed or poisoned by attacks either. And when coupled with Hatterene's signature ability, or not signature ability, their 
typical ability, Magic Bounce, which blocks status moves and reflects them back to the user, you're kind of uh, invincible, in, in a sense, from being, like, status. You can't really be flinched. Uh, you can't be slept. Things like that. You're immune to Spore, which is cool. Um, and so with Covert Cloak and Magic Bounce, there's, like, not a lot of ways that you can stop Hatterene from being able to click Trick Room. A very common lead that we would see as I was doing the Battle Tower last week was just Indeedee sets up Psychic Terrain, uh, clicks Follow Me to redirect attacks their way, Hatterene has a very free time clicking Trick Room, uh, and you're basically good to go from there. Hatterene, I, so the problem is, like, Expanding Force does tremendous overwhelming damage to uh, Amoongus. I, if you're running the Life Orb, it's, it's almost like a one-shot if they don't Terra, but in the format of Terra, Mushroom is commonly will just become a different type that isn't weak to um, Expanding Force, and they can still cause a lot of problems. Fortunately, Expanding Force and Dazzling Gleam are both spread moves, so, like, Rage Powder doesn't really bother you, you don't get redirected into them. Uh, but yeah, basically just another tried-and-true combo. I don't know what I want for my EV spread for Indeedy today. Um, I, the one that I have in my team right now is just Max Special Defense, because they are an artifact of an era from when the most common lead that I needed to have a, an answer into was Flutter Main Chi Yu. So I just need to be as specially defensive as possible so as to have a very good turn one where I could eat both of their attacks with the follow me and like not just only eating one of their attacks. Um, like a, a dark, the, the spread on this in DD right now with max HP, max special defense and the Psychic Seed, which gives you plus one in special defense after that, lets you actually eat a Chi Yu Dark Pulse and survive even though it's super effective and Chiyu has the ability that reduces the special defense of all of their Pokemon by 25%. So, like, despite all of that, you don't need to Terra, and you can just eat a Dark Pulse, and then, eat, like, a Moon Blast from Fluttermane with the remaining, like, 5 HP, and then, you know, faint. But then your partner has gotten Trick Room up, and you're good to go. So that's where the spread came from. It's a pre-Urshifu spread, um, so I'm not sure how relevant it's going to be. I might need to mess around with it. Like, you'll note that I have almost no physical defense here compared to my massive special defense. So I don't know. It might be a problem. Anyway, so we've got like our 2-2 combo here. Both of these guys pair well next to each other. And then I was like, I really want to use Rabska for some reason. I had it in my head. Well, I, I, I can explain why I want to use Rabska. So we have to take a, another look at an alternate version of this team that I ha had in mind. And I probably won't be running today. So originally, the team that did really, really well at Melbourne was, uh, I believe they had... We looked at it the other day. I don't remember. It was Torkoal, Indeedy, Hatterene, uh, Annihilate, and then the remaining two. One was a Gallade, and I think Urshifu? I think? I, I don't remember. I could pull it up, but I'm too lazy to. And so I was really intrigued to see Annihilate doing well, because this is like a Regulation A Pokemon in a lot of ways. Specifically, this moveset is very Regulation A. Um, so what this Annihilate is running, instead of trying to get stacks on Rage Fist, which is a, a ghost, it's his signature move, it's a ghost move that gets 50 more power every time you get hit, with like basically no cap. Uh, so your goal is to just be very bulky and accumulate stacks that way. What this Annihilate's whole gimmick is, and this is the wrong EV spread, should be like this, is leveraging the move Final Gambit. Uh, so a cool thing about Annihilate is, is that it has a very above average HP stat of 110, and so when you max that out, you get 217 health points at your maximum. Final Gambit is a fighting type move that does damage equal to your current HP, and then you faint. So the kind of gimmick here is that you lead with something that wants to set Trick Room, and you use your Choice Scarf boosted speed and your max out speed here. So you go up to get another 75 off of this. So you're at like 230 or something like that. Uh, is that right? 220 move speed, which is like not too bad. Um, and then you just click Final Gambit into something and you do 217 damage to them unless you've been hit by something. Hopefully knocking them off the board. Anything that has fewer HP than you, you can clear off the board. Um, and so then you, you're fainted. Somebody else can come in, like you can send the Torkoal in. So like a, a lead would be uh, like Indeedee Annihilate. So you can't be sucker punched or anything. Indeedee can click Trick Room. And I like just takes a guy off the board immediately with Final Gambit, and you pretty much immediately turn it into a 3v3, uh, and then like you can send in like Hatterene or Torkoal or something like that to replace Annihilate. Pretty cool. It sounds really strong, right? The problems here are that Annihilate isn't really the fastest Pokemon, even with Choice Scarf these days. 
so that that can kind of cause problems. Uh, you can easily get disrupted. Or um, another problem would be if the enemy team decides they want to double protect. For example, both both opponents click protect turn one, and so what you do is you click final gambit, and you are still alive because you weren't able to hit your opponent. Indeed, he clicks Trick Room. That goes off because they were uninterrupted. And so now your speed boosted Choice Scarf Annihilate is locked into Final Gambit as you're in Trick Room and is now probably one of the slower things on the field. And you're just kind of dead weight. And there's not much you can do. Um, if you're like Lucky, you can maybe follow me next turn and absorb both attacks. And then Annihilate gets to throw out the Final Gambit that you're locked into. That's kind of bad. Um, but, like, I don't know. So I was thinking like, oh, well, you know, what might be a cool twist on that is if instead of leading Ndidi and Annihilate, you had a different Trick Room user. And I was like, oh, you know, Rabska, this guy, kind of slept on. They get access to Expanding Force in the DLC, which is the move that makes Hatterene so good and made Armourouge so good before her. Uh, they get Struggle Bug, which is a, also a spread move which, with Bug Stab, which is pretty good. And then they get that signature move, Revival Blessing, where you bring a Pokemon back from fainted with 50% HP. So I was like, oh, this makes perfect sense. You lead Rabska and Iolape, you do the final gambit thing while you set up Trick Room, you send in, like, Indeedee to either set up Psychic Terrain for your own expanding force, uh, or you send in, like, Torkoal, and then you just, like, blast off, like, Struggle Bug, uh, Eruption, whatever. And then you try and, like, weave in whenever you get an opportunity to, like, have a moment to breathe, a Revival Blessing, and you revive your Annihilate, and then you have a fast Pokemon in the back. Um, you can do something like that. Uh, so then, once, you know, Torkoal and Rabiscov paint, you actually have another guy back in the field who can start clicking close combat and try and eke out the game. Um, so that was my thought. But I was like, I don't know. I feel like you get walled out too hard by Double Protect, or if your opponent's a Ghost-type, Final Gambit being a fighting move, you know, can't launch into them. That's kind of rough. Also, no attack investment on Annihilate is, like, kind of mediocre. Uh... Since you have to invest all in speed and all in HP to make Final Gambit do its thing. So I just feel like this guy is kind of un going to underdeliver. deliver uh, So that got me thinking some more, like, what can we do? And that got me to where I was now with this, this team. Um, and that is, instead of using Revival Blessing, we're going to try Speed Swap on Rabska, which is doing something different. Instead of trying to have, like, a suicide lead, we're actually going to try and hang in there for as long as we can. So the, the gimmick here would be you lead a Rabska and Iron Boulder. Uh, Iron Boulder, again, is a new Paradox Pokemon who gets access to a really cool move that sounds extremely busted on paper. I'm going to find out how busted it really is. Iron Boulder gets access to Mighty Cleave, a 95 base power, 100% accurate rock move. Uh, and so this, this is like unfathomably strong for a rock move. They're usually not accurate. But also, it has the effect of bypassing protection without breaking it. Which is the thing that makes Urshifu so dang good. And Urshifu is a top-tier Pokemon. They're, like, I think, number two or three for most used in, like, day twos for regionals uh, because of their ability to bypass protect. So, this is, like, probably the best rock move in the game. I, I would agree. Um, the second only to maybe I Ivy Cudgel on... Rock Ogre Pond, but then you're running Rock Ogre Pond, who's not very good. Um, that move is 100 base power, 100 accuracy, and has a high crit chance, but it can't go through Protect. Yeah, Rock, rock Moves all have this giant, like, accuracy problem. Um, like, if we look up, I think they've got Stone Edge, probably. Even Meteor Beam, who is a move that you have to spend a turn charging, uh, unless you have, like, a bent Power Herb or something, only has 90 accuracy. You could literally spend a turn charging and just whiff this attack. Which is awful. Like, I don't know why they do this. Um, not that you'd run Meteor Beam on this guy, but that's just an example of, like, a rock move. Rock Blast. It's a multi-hit move, but it only has 90 accuracy. Um, and I guess he doesn't really get too many other... Okay, yeah, like, Rock Throw, 90 accuracy. Rock Tomb, 95 accuracy. Does he not get Stone Edge? That's crazy. Um, rock Slide famously only has, like, 90 accuracy or something like that. Uh, so, all these rock moves are always inaccurate. But really, the thing that brought me back to this was this gets through Protect. And so, again, I'm running a Trick Room team, right? Where my the whole goal is to set up this field condition that inverts the speed order, but it only lasts a fixed number of turns. And the idea is that you can overwhelm your opponent by them just not being able to get their buttons off because you're moving faster than they are in this new field condition. And the easiest way to 
deal with that if you're them uh, once the move goes up, assuming you let them actually... You, you've allowed me to set up Trick Room. What do you do? Well, you double protect. You click protect on your guys every other turn or in alternation to get me to never be able to damage them, waste turns, and eventually get stalled out. Uh, so, it seems to me that having a very strong same type attack bonus move that doesn't care if you protect might be pretty good uh, in mitigating protect stall. It might prevent my opponent from wanting to click protect at all because they're just going to trade unfavorably as they protect and still take damage anyway. Um, or it might not. I don't know. So the thought would be, turn one, uh, you've got a decent amount of speed on your guy. Uh, he's speedier than most. He has a booster energy boosting his attack by another 30%. And you just click Mighty Cleave into something and hope for the best. Uh, if your Iron Boulder survives into turn two, you can click uh, Speed Swap on him with Rabska after Trick Room goes up, giving your 45 speed to Iron Boulder, making them now very slow. And because speed is dynamic in Gen 9... Uh, they'll basically move immediately. And so now you're in Trick Room, and you're like the slowest thing on the field, continuing to just do big damage. Uh, then turns three through whatever, you can click like Struggle Bug, Expanding Force, what have you. I assume at this point Iron Boulder will probably faint after like one or two attacks. Uh, and then you can send out like Hatterene, you can send out Torkoal, whatever you got. And that's kind of the thought process. Um, if we have like a uh, situation where we don't want to set up Trick Room right away like that. You could also lead with Indeedee and Iron Boulder, I'm thinking. Um, Indeedee can follow me while Iron Boulder can use Swords Dance to boost their attack like even higher. And then just ri let it rip with... Uh... So two stages of attack is doubling your attack stat. So you're getting close to like 400 attack immediately with like a Mighty Cleaver or a Sacred Sword. And I think that's probably pretty good. Um, but this is all like theoretical. I haven't actually played ranked in an extremely long amount of time. So, not a long time. Sometimes he wins in like three turns anyway. That, that's kind of what I'm hoping, right? Um, the real fun is if uh, you end up doing the speed swap thing and for whatever reason, Rabska is able to survive the entire duration of Trick Room, you can then speed swap again onto your like Torkoal or Hatterene and make them very fast because you'll be giving them Iron Boulder's original speed. But I don't think it's ever going to come to that. I don't see any way that these guys survive that long. Uh, anyway, it's all theoretical, because I have not played ranked in a very long time, and we're going to find out today. If all of this feels really bad, I have a couple other guys that are on the bench. Namely, I'm going to see if Iron Hands uh, fits the bill. This would be Clear Amulet. So you're immune to Intimidate, and just have good all-around stats. You can fake out, and then just do big damage in Trick Room, something like that. Um, anyway, anyway, anyway. Games, and browser off. 16 by 9 on. Let me turn off my music. There we are. So, we're going to see what happens. Because I have not played in ages. Hope you're all doing well tonight, by the way. I hope I get, like, any wins. I'm definitely in the lowest rank because I haven't played in so long. It's definitely sent me all the way to the bottom. But we'll see what happens. Iron Hands will never be bad in Trick Room, you're correct. But he doesn't fit in with... Like, Rav's got Iron Boulder. Or, uh, yeah. Oops. This is not the ranked battle. So I think I have to uh, change some Terra types real quick. And then we should be good to go. Unfortunately, I have, like, a quadrillion Terra Shards. Because I don't build teams very often. So let me hop over to where that gets done. And then we'll log on. And I'll get very nervous, even though there are zero stakes. And it doesn't matter if I'm good at this game or not. Uh, but I'd like to not get, like, completely humiliated. <coughs> Chime Echoes, I'm going to fight in Pokeball too. You're so right. That's the other thing, is like, I'm definitely starting from the bottom, and so my brain is like, oh, I'm going to fight extremely meta teams by very high competent players, because that's what I watch on Twitch, like, all day. I watch players who are definitely better than me, or at least have a much stronger competitive drive than me. Like, continue to grind up to, like, the top 100 in rank, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to be fighting that for two hours today, and I haven't played in six months. I'm going to die. Uh, but I don't think that's actually how it's going to work, going to shake out. Um, so I'm not really sure what Terra type I think is best on Iron Boulder. I'm just going to guess Grass is probably generally good. Uh, it gives you an answer into Amoongus who would try and sleep you since you can't one-shot Amoongus with that lead anyway, like no matter what you do. Um, so that's probably cool. I'm going to give it a shot. My other thought was Rock just for like more damage on your Mighty Cleave, which is what he starts with. But I don't, I don't really know. Oh, and I have, to, I have to bottle cap this nerd also. Uh... That's important to do. 
Um, I guess I could leave and be with Rock for now, and and see what happens. I do know that I want Dark Terra on my Rabska. I, I have to show my cool Rabska. Yeah, Urba Terra type, Grass Terra type. I have to show off how cool my Rabska is in a second. I also have to bottle cap this guy. Um, yes. Uh, real quick, I wanted to show off my Rabska. I spent a tremendous amount of time hunting this guy. I don't know why I had it in my head that I wanted this so bad. So I got me a shiny Rabska uh, with a Mark, which is really rare. This is like two very low uh, coin rolls. The Mark is 1 in 50, and the shiny is 1 in like 400 and something, with like all the modifiers applied. Uh, and I got it in a Dream Ball, which is very fun. I caught this the other day. Uh, which was very exciting. The Dream Ball, I thought, was very reminiscent of, like, the giant uh, orb that Rabska ponders over its head. And it got, uh, magically, it got the sleeping mark, because I caught it at night. Uh, so that was very exciting to me. Um, it's named Journey, because there are many Journey albums that have a scarab on the cover. So there's that. Um, so yeah, I got a bottle cap you, and I got a bottle cap you, and then I got to set up the team. And I think that... Oh, and I gotta level them up also. Uh, yeah, I would agree. Any, the coolest raps get anyone's ever gone out of their way to catch. But, uh, if anybody really, really, really wants, you can hit me up later, because I have a couple shiny relers left. I have four of them, I think. And shiny reller is pretty cool, because instead of kicking around a ball of dung, they kick around a big old nugget. Like, gold nugget here, which I think is pretty cool. So I have a few of these left over. Yeah, they, normally they just have a dung ball, but the shiny one is gold. It's got, like, a metal shader and everything, which I think is quite cool. I don't know. I think Relo is a cool Pokemon. Uh, anyway, let's go bottle cap these guys so their stats are good. I did EV tra train them already. I know that much. Um, I I've done that step. But we will, we will see what, what, how this pans out. Um... Bottle cap guy is here. You there. It's worth mentioning, by the way, that on the like, second draft of this team after Annihilate, but before Iron Boulder. Uh, the Iron Boulder in question was originally a uh, Urshifu. Because Urshifu has the same thing that I was talking about before, where you can uh, get through Protect. But one, I expect a lot more people on this closed team sheet's best of one ladder to see an Urshifu and, like, understand what to do. And, like, what, what it can reasonably be expected to do. Uh, two... Urshifu actually has a, like, noticeably lower attack stat than Iron Boulder, which is fine and good because the signature move of Urshifu crits every time. So, like, it kind of balances out. Uh, but also, I felt that Dark was resisted by more things um, in the meta right now than Rock is. So I, I kind of just thought it'd be fun. Um, also, I feel like Urshifu needs, like, a choice band to really do a lot of damage, which is kind of goofy to say. Whereas I can just slap a uh, booster energy on uh, our boy here, Iron Boulder. And, like, not be locked into a move. Uh, the third thing is that Urshifu, especially the single strike one, the dark one, is kind of reliant on Sucker Punch to do a lot. And I can't use Sucker Punch if I set up my own Psychic Terrain. Because uh, that blocks all priority moves, mine and theirs. So, it's like anyone's game. Uh, I should have a... It's fascinating to watch so much information dispersed that feels overwhelming, but I can also input them. I'm sorry. Uh, like, I'm sure I'm going at this, like, at a mile a minute. And I, it's like I said, it's all theoretical, um, because I have not actually played this team. <laughs> it's just, like, fun to think about and build. Um, I know Sari in the chat did a couple of rounds on this on Showdown. I don't really like playing on Showdown too much these days. I find it stressful, which is bad. 
um, and video games shouldn't be stressful. Uh, so I'd prefer if that weren't the case. What do I, I need uh, 20, 21 levels, right? There we go. Uh, I don't know. The people who play on Showdown are really good. Like, they're very strong players. The game is much faster because there's no downtime for animations and such. Um, and I don't know. I just, it just stresses me out, mostly. Which is dumb. Like, there's no stakes. Um, I also don't like that there's a chat. Which I know I can turn off, but I feel like that indicates that I'm, like, mentally weak or something like that. Which isn't true, also. But I, I don't know. There's something about in game ladder that I like. Also, I kind of just want to play best of one. And the current VGC, um, like, obviously, people who want to get better at the game play best of three, which has been added to Showdown now. I don't really have the patience for that, I think. Um, I'm, I'm not signed up to play a tournament. I don't want to play tournaments. I like running tournaments. I love being a professor and running tournaments. I have little appetite to compete. I am not that hungry. I love seeing people uh, do their best, but it's not for me. That's what I'm saying, right? But that's what happens when I, like, eat, breathe, and sleep Pokemon. Because I'm always thinking about helping with uh, tournaments to run, or, like, content to make and things like that. Um, things to stream. I loved doing ribbon hunting where it was all PvE. Even when I was getting really tilted at the battle towers, I was still having fun. Um, but... Uh, I don't know, I get stressed out easy. Um, it's because my pedigree for playing games is like, ah, what's your other favorite game, Tom? Oh, Dota? That explains a lot about why your brain's all messed up. I just, I love PvP, but I get stressed out, I get wigged out real easy. And I, I think I'll get over that pretty soon. But because I haven't played this game against other people in like six months, I think I'm just like, uh, kind of stressed out. Okay, we're gonna try the Life Orb variant of Hatterene, which does more damage, but doesn't let me do the, um, like, kind of raw setup that I want to do. And I need to give you a Carbonella Charcoal. So we're gonna see how that works. Um, I went over, like, a ton of options that I have if I need to make little modifications here and there to the team, because, you know, it feels really bad initially or something like that. Um, I think everybody's all set to go. I just gotta build a team. So my Trick Room team. Urshifu, you're out of here. Um, you two are good. Torkoal, you're good. And then Arabska. And Iron Boulder. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that looks correct to me. But are you the right one? I guess so, why not? I have I have two identical Indeedies, both named Benatar. I don't remember which one. I don't know why I'm... Wait, hold on. Let's actually see what the difference is. So you, if I look at stats, are max special defense, max HP, the one we were just looking at. Are you trained any differently? I feel like you probably have like a more even-handed spread. Oh, you're max defense. Okay, so you're the other way. Okay. Well, we'll see what we need. Oh yeah, I also don't really like that um, Showdown has like a visible MMR. Which is, again, not something that I should care about, and I don't really. But it does just feel bad to be reminded that you're losing points at something, even if the points don't matter. Alright, I'm going back to being muffled because Bon has returned to the office. So I will mask up again in accordance with her wishes. Uh, let me know how the audio is. Best I can do. Yeah, I, I don't know. It just feels unnecessary. But I mean, I get that Showdown is made for p competitive players to get better. Uh, so I don't blame them. Hey, Ricky. How's it going? Good to see you, Doctor. I still sound decent. That's good to hear. Uh, so, let's just get right into it, I suppose. Rick, uh, Ricky, you missed me explaining how this team works. Thank you, thank you for wishing me happy birthday. My birthday is tomorrow, it's not tonight, um, so don't get too ahead of yourself, but... Um, oh, if you're watching on mute. 
Wait, do I just start an Ultra Ball? Or is that where I ended last time? Okay, good. I do have to start over again. I was like, I don't know if I'm ready for Ultra Ball. Uh, that's this team. Here goes nothing. And we're off to the races. Jackson, what do you got? Okay, we're fighting a sand team. That's cool. I could potentially run my sun team and really mess with them. I don't think Iron Boulder does a ton here. Um, they're kind of weak to ground. Uh, and things are going to resist rock. We do have a dark type that we have to deal with. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Must love Polyrath. Does not get Swift Swim, yeah? Um, I think we just do, like, the world's most basic, boring trick room setup and not bring the funny new guys. Go for it, dude. If you beat me, I'll just say you're stream sniping, so it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter to me either way. Again, I can't, I can't stress enough. The last time I played online ranked ladder was before Worlds last year. Okay. So if I'm really lucky here, Indeedee is going to, like, beef it big time here because they're two physical attackers. While I get Trick Room up, I would imagine for free. Um, trick Room... Follow me. Now, if he goes for a rock slide, this is when I'm going to wish I had Covert Cloak, because I'm going to flinch. No, okay. We're just clicking buttons out here. Got it. Okay, I'm thinking too hard. Okay, I'm thinking too hard. I see. That was Fire Blast, yeah? Or, uh, Fire Bomb or something like that? Yeah. We're just clicking buttons, yeah? I don't know. I, I'm clearly thinking, I'm like, oh, he's going to rock slot, I'm going to flinch. Uh, you know, he's going to hit me with a strong dark move. Do I need terror? That would be kind of bad. Um, I think I click this because he's immune to um, expanding force. Now he's going to juke me after doing like two absolutely worthless moves. Um, and the other move was gyro ball, and I'm like definitely slower than all his guys. So that's doing like negative damage. Don't think too hard, yeah? Ooh. Ooh. Important note, Tyranitar has 50% more special defense in sand, as long as it's a rock type. Okay, I'm thinking too hard, I'm sorry. Zinglish, hello. Tomstream hype, nice to see you. Uh, as I was saying, I, I apologize for no lip flaps today. Thank you for the follow, also. Um, I'm, I'm currently masked up for reasons that are probably obvious. Um, I'm not worried about this Tyranitar. I do kind of just want to click Expanding Force. Um, I, eh, Sight, mm, Degleam's good enough. Follow me, the power of love. Did the bonk work? Or did, it, did that not go through? Oh, boo. I, I need to, uh, I think, update my login for that. YouTube Studio disconnected. Oh! Hold on. There you go. This thing survived? What the hell? Whoa! He got me. No, it's still not going? Okay, after this battle, uh, I will figure out what's going on. Because you need to be able to hit me in the head. It's important. Yeah, send you out. End the the sandstorm. Ooh, Garchomp. I'm gonna eat an earthquake, and it's gonna be pretty bad. But I think uh, t Terra Fire, Sun Boosted Charcoal, Max HP Eruption. With helping hand is probably gonna do a lot of damage, I would hope. Nail by eruption. So true. 
We put on the funny little hat. Nailed by eruption. Let's do our move. Pop, pop, pop. Nailed by eruption. Does this knock out Garchomp? Who resists it? I feel like yes. Nailed by eruption. No. Wow. We got a crit on Glizzer, it doesn't matter. Um, they were gonna not get knocked out anyway. But he uses bite! And we're down to our last guy, but that's okay. Should I be worried that I'm down to my last two in a game that, like, is ostensibly this non-competitive? Uh, we have one turn of Trick Room left, um, so there's no real reason to not just do that and then protect. It's messed up how the little smoke cloud coming out of Torkoal's back is also crystallized, now that I think about it. Cool, thank you, Jackson. Good game. I hope I've put some ideas in your head about another archetype. Uh, okay, let me fix my bonker real quick. The crystal smoke cloud can't be healthy, eh? One second, I think my, like, twitched OAuth token probably expired for this application. Real quick, let me reboot that. Whoa, no, stop your right, good record. If this were the global challenge, you'd be so right, actually. Uh, let's see, settings for my little bonker. There we go. And then I probably need to connect again. There we go. All is well in the world. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, not interested in humiliating people or anything like that. Like, I just said how much this agonizes me. Uh, and we have a long way to go for Master Ball. I don't think we're getting to Master Ball tonight. Because, like, as you can see, one battle did, like, half of this, and we've got, like, eight more pips to go. So this will be an ongoing thing. But I was traveling for the GC. I can probably get up to Great Ball. Yeah, because the first two, it's just, like... Uh, one or two. Kill Sue OG. Okay, what do you got? Okay, so this is a rain team. Um, I really just want to, like, run Iron Boulder, but I'm like, oh, he's got ground on uh, the Crocodile. T two, uh, two water types, a grass type with Sinistra, Mousehold, and, like, another guy. Arcaliodon, my guy. Almost all the right. Yeah, like, I do think hard TR is, like, a, a noob trap in a way. Where it's like very hard to deal with unless you know exactly what you're doing. I do feel like I can just keep running in DD, and like this is fine. Um, I see no reason why this wouldn't work again. I want to run the Iron Boulder Rabska, but I need like a very specific condition for it, and I don't know what that is, but I'll know it when I see it. Uh, is the thing. Maybe if I, like, Terra Grass the Iron Boulder, it'll feel better, and then I'll feel like I can bring it more often. Because right now he's still Terra Rock. Because um, I just wasn't sure what, what would feel right. The, yeah, exactly, like the girls. Like, the, the thing is, love does ultimately win. Uh, but seeing a dude who's got, like, a hard rain team, I'm like, oh, this is not, this is not your day. Yeah, like, I think even just neutral, things that take neutral damage from rock are, like, totally acceptable in this condition. Um. Okay, so, Mousehold is gonna, what, population bomb me? Right? They're gonna pop bomb me, right? There's, like, no way they don't click pop bomb. Um, so I'm gonna do the following. Because what I'm expecting is I'm going to get pop-bombed, and DD's going to die. I'm Again, I'm thinking too hard. But I think they're going to use Population Bomb, and DD will go down because it has, like, no physical defense. And then I'm worried about a Steel move into uh, Hatterene, so I'm going to Terra Steel myself and click this uh, Trick Room. Oh, pop-bombing their own Archaliodon would be really funny. Um, we'll see what happens. That's actually really funny. 
it caps off at like six, so that's a little excessive, but you might be right. They might also just side beat up. Um, but I'm worried I'm gonna get hit, hit by like a flash cannon, uh, or like heavy slam or something and die. So I'm gonna Terra Steel right away. They're probably not gonna fire an earth power off into me. I don't even know if he gets that move. I don't I don't crawl, but this should be very safe. Alright, show me what you got. Ah, they were going for beat-up, but, you know, follow me says nerds to that. And then I'm assuming they're going to go for a body press. Which is also going to be into Indeedee, and do probably negligible damage. No, okay, so I was right, they were going for a steel move. That would have hurt really bad into Hatterene. That would have hurt, like, extremely bad into Hatterene. But we're good now. Um, I was really expecting a pop bomb to just clear me out. Um, but now we can do this. And we can actually click Expanding Force. Oh, actually, I probably should have gone for Deagling, because I think that's neutral into Arcaliodon. Oh, well. Yeah, follow me is a good move. It's funny when it not only... Uh, they were trying beat up to beat up their side target. Um, because they wanted a max defense on their Arcaliodon so that he could then, like, body press or something. He might still get it off now, actually, because I didn't follow me again. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, see? There we go. Hi, Isby, thank you. Oh, it was a crit also. I shouldn't have, uh, parried, I guess. No, he just wants to be able to do body press for big damage, but I gave it to him by Terra, going from double resisting it to being weak to it. Alright, Torkoal, the tried and true, strong boned. And now I don't have a uh, Terra Fire, which is a bummer. Yeah, it's, it's all about body press. The dude just wanted to do a huge damage body press. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, if he launched Flash Cannon into me without redirect, it would have been troublesome. But that would have only been a problem if indeed he died the first turn. Which, if they got hit by a Population Bomb, I think they would have. Um... I think I have to go for a follow me again and click Eruption. I'm worried that I don't get rid of our Caludon with an Eruption, because it's only normal effective. Gotta figure it out. I I'm pretty sure just a follow me is very safe here. He definitely doesn't survive two Eruptions, but I think he survives one. Okay. Do they have a Flash Fire Gun? No, they're going to make it rain, right? They're going to send in rain? Yeah, okay. I'm going to lose to a guy in Pokeball here, actually. Check this out. Terra Electric, okay. Well, they still take neutral. I'm really glad I followed me now. Because he's going to fire off a uh, Electro Cannon into my Ndidi. And I think Ndidi might survive still, because they are max special defense. This is going to do not a lot, though. Yeah, we got trouble. Yeah, absolutely, of course. If you see an obvious play, absolutely tell me what you think I should be doing. Because uh, I sure didn't do it. Um. Hmm. I think I go for my ground move now, though. Switching out to get the weather advantageous again would probably have been smart. But yeah, okay, I just lose. <laughs> I'm not doing enough damage. Interesting. And now I'm going to get Weather Bolt.
That was Scorching Sand, yeah? I could probably switch it out for Earth Power, huh? It feels underwhelming, and yeah, here comes... Oh, they're going for Tailwind, okay. Yeah, so it would have been good to maintain the weather advantage. Because I'm not going to be faster when this... T uh... Yeah, it would have been nice, you're right, I agree. I don't know why I didn't do it, I was just like, oh, I die. Uh, and waste a turn. No, no, no. I mean, like, I was thinking about that, obviously, too. Um, it just, like, didn't pan out. Uh, I think my play here is... Go for the... Sleep on the U. Protect Torkoal. They're gonna try and go for a Weather Ball into Torkoal if they don't... Oh, I do get the sleep. That's good. I'm, I was hoping they were going to attack Torkoal with this one, but we'll see. Oh, yes! Good, good, good. Okay. We're fine, gamers, um, I think. The Trick Room is over, so they're really fast now. We lose the Psychic Terrain. We have, what, two turns of rain? We're not really still in this, but we're kind of still in this. Question is, how fast is Arcaliodon? Okay, they take Pelipper out, so they can get the rain back up again. Oh, that's annoying. That takes me down the sash. Get to sleep again. This just doesn't do enough, though. And because they're slept, I can't even get the burn. Do you think this thing knows Scald? I guess we're going to find out. This thing being the teacup. Time to click. Is that matcha gotcha? I think that is. I don't know what that the word is. Okay, so this is not very effective. Not doing enough. Now the rain's gonna end. Okay. I was I forgot I was faster. I was like, ah, oh. he wakes up. But he stays asleep, which is good. Luligant goes down here, unfortunately. Yeah, I think this is just game. Because there's no way I don't get Weather Bald next turn. I should have just protected again. Because now the rain's going to end, but they're going to send Pelipper back in. I just didn't have a good answer for this guy. Pelipper. Oh, wait, no, now the rain ends, right? You, oh, no, he has Damp Rock. Duh. Eight turns. Yeah, I needed to save Torkoal. 
I should have just not brought Torkoal into a rain team, frankly. Oh, he's asleep. Why am I... <sighs> I'm stupid. I'm playing bad. I could have gotten free damage on the sleep. Now he's definitely going to wake up, right? And then I just get clocked. No, he's still asleep. Okay. This is going to knock me out, though, for sure. We hang in there, but I miss. Pelipper, we miss the Pelipper, so. Unfortunate. Good game. Rain ends, but it doesn't matter. Uh, they do what needs to be done. Pelipper definitely wakes up this turn, and they click Weather Ball or anything. Yep. Alas, unlucky. I should have not brought Torkoal into a, uh, a weather lineup. And I also should have attacked, I think, that turn. Well, I had, like, damage, free damage to do to Pelipper. But what can he do? Yeah, I, I I agree. I needed to switch Torkoal out and back in. For sure. Oh, uh, I'll do it next time, I guess. I, I'm going to switch out uh, Scorching Sands on Torkoal for Earth Power, which is just a little bit stronger. Uh, it doesn't have a chance to burn, but I don't think that really matters in the playstyle I'm currently going for. So, it's probably a little bit better. All right, Japanese player, what have we got? Now this feels like a team I can click Iron Boulder into. Like Iron Boulder, Rabska. With like, they have no weather, so the back line of these two feels strong also. I think. I think this feels correct. I think? I keep saying I think, I don't know. I was, like, trying to think if, uh, Expanding Force would be good into, uh, um, Ogre Pond. But then, like, they've got two Dark types. Uh, Blissey. Like, I don't know. But now we get to see if the Iron Boulder thing actually does anything. I like the trainer card. Oh, I'm gonna get Sucker Punched, huh? Interesting. This is, like, not a good matchup for me, because I'm going to get sucker punched by the um, cat. So I think I just go for it here. Terror Rock into... You don't think sucker punch kill? I guess we're going to find out. Tailwind, okay. No, they're not going to get taunted. Huh? Oh, swap, okay. That's funny. I got a tr uh, scarf.
That's fine. They set up Tailwind, so, like, I'm actually still doing okay. <laughs> Now, because they've got Tailwind up, I'm assuming I'm still really fast. Um, and I'm, I forget how the mechanics of swapping the item work. I'm assuming since Trick Room was used after I acquired the item, uh, I'm, like, locked into Trick Room, right? I can't just do... Yeah, okay. So you switch out into you. If I had received the item uh, after I used the move, I believe I would have free choice. Exactly. Yeah. It's been a while. You gotta forgive me. Okay. Well, I can't escape, which is good. However, get cleaved. <laughs> you should not have tailwinded, brother. <laughs> Alright, please show me Lapras, it would be really funny. Okay, we'll take it. You can also get cleaved, actually. Uh, I'm assuming this is still stronger because of just the nature of Stab. And it covers for, like, a Protect or any other kind of stall out. And then we're definitely good here for Eruption. I was worried about this one. I was like, oh, I'm going to get Sucker Punched. I should have Terrored Fire, actually. They're going to Terra. Like, I'm not going to use Terra on anything else at this point, knowing what their team is. Blissey's going to turn what? Ghost? Okay, so I'm really glad I didn't Sacred Zord then. It's funny how I didn't end up needing to um, speed swap. Because um, they helpfully clicked Tailwind. Oh, come on. Whatever, it's not like Blissey can do damage to me. Cleaved. Now, do we think Murkrow is holding a Focus Sash? We have not done any damage to them so far. I guess we're about to find out. For real, for real. The trick almost got me good, though. I was like, damn, I'm locked in the uh, trick room. I have to hard swap here and expose my, my weak little Torkoal to damage. I think Mur Murkrow is holding a Focus Sash. Actually, no, it probably has Evio Light, right? You don't run Focus Sash on Merc. We're going to find Nailed out right now. By eruption. I was correct, it is in fact holding a Focus Sash. <clears throat> Boom. Cool, that's very funny that that worked out. I can't believe they went for Trick. I Now I don't know, though, if Sucker Punch would have killed. I'd have to do the calc. I feel like Sucker Punch would have killed, uh, but then conversely, Flower Trick could have also killed. That's true, four cleaves, four KOs. Dude got all of them. I'd have to do the calc. I feel like either of those would have killed. Which makes me, again, think Terror Grass would probably be pretty good. Um, in the face of something like that. In fact, I'm going to go do that right now. Because I feel like that would enable me to play this into more lineups. Also, I wanted to replace uh, Scorching Sands on Torkoal with uh, Earth Power. Can I do that from here? Yeah. Earth Power, right? Do you not just have that? I have to get the TM again? Ugh. Pain in the butt. Alright, uh, let's see. Bag. Geoforce. These are alphabetical, right? A, B, C, D, E, F. Do I have any Geoforzas? I do. No, Gemoforza, Geoforza, there we go. Torkoal. 
We just need that little bit more power, and I think we would have been good. This is a 20 power increase. Uh, the trade-off is you can't burn, but it can lower special defense, so I don't know what I was thinking with Searing Sand. Hey, Denshi! Hello! Good to see you. Uh, I apologize for no lip flaps. I'm currently wearing a mask because we've got a, a, a sick person in the household. Um, but it's really good to see you. Um, 25 months, Hachi Machi. Um, but yeah, that, that tracks because next tomorrow is my birthday, and that is my uh, stream anniversary. Uh, I mean, it's it's less still and more again is the problem, because um, it was early January we had we had a uh, illness in the household and now we have it again. It's rough out there, gamers. Um, but yeah, thank you for stopping by. We are currently two and one on the rank ladder against the lowest tier of player, um, myself included. I am also a low tier player. Um, I did get clowned on by a rain team, which is very embarrassing for me, but uh, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, when it's good, I think it just, like, is unstoppable. But I think there's very few times when it's good, which might make it not ideal to have on the team. More testing is required. But hey, that's what this is for. Yeah, there's still... I Denshi, I told you this. It's a manufacturing defect with my cartridge. The whole game is in Simlish for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, but uh, it's just how it is. I've, like, I've got, like, a rare misprint cartridge. I, I think grass is good here. It covers your um, water weakness... It covers, it removes your, like, dark weakness, uh, ghost weakness. It covers uh, your ground weakness. I think this is good. If not, I'll just have to get more grass shards. Mamma mia, exactly. I hope you're doing well. It's always good to see you, and really good to hear from you. Thank you once again, as always, for making this possible. I love that I can pin upwards of, like, 40 stupid items to myself right now. And it just works. I love having all these ribbons on me. I love having hand tracking that just works. Uh, I love having the stupid party popper in my mouth. It's very fun. Um, okay. Mamma mia. I hope you're doing well. I can't wait to see what you do next. Um, we're going to get back into fighting in just a moment. Uh, register. Oh, wait. Who did, I, who did I lose? Wait, I did just teach the right. Yeah, okay. I've got the two identical Torkoals also, from different times and places. It just works. It's great. Best tool I've used for anything I've ever used a tool for. Uh, okay. Back to ladder. Yeah, I got lots of ideas. A lot of them are, like, various EV spreads for the same Pokemon, too. Like, I've got two Indeedees. Um, I, I have an old and new Torkoal from before Pokemon Home and, and now, etc., etc. But, it's, well, the old Torkoal is the new Torkoal, technically, because the one I'm using right now is the oldest one from 2015. But the one in the box is from when I, uh, I didn't have Pokemon Home access yet. So you've got, like, those. Um, I think I've got an Urshifu in there. I've got, like, the Iron Hands. I've got Ting Lu, I've got a Bomba Snow, I've got a Bronzong from when I was running that. That was a fun team. Uh, that was actually a pretty good best of one closed team sheets team. Didn't involve Torkoal in any way, so I can't use it for the Ribbon Master quest here. But it was fun. The whole goal would be you set up uh, Snow with a Bomba Snow, so you get that 50% defense boost. And then you side target Gyro Ball uh, into yourself with, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bronzor. So you trigger weakness policy, and then you just start blasting out Blizzard. And with the coverage of uh, ice, grass, ground, uh, and I think that's it, because I think you pack protect also. You have, like, really good coverage into pretty much everything, was was the plan. It was fun. That's what I ran the last time I participated in a uh, GC, also. And I did pretty well, except for the final day. Uh, Articuno! What do we have here? Because they're gonna, they've got, like, screens and healing. Which makes me kind of feel like I just want to cleave. I feel like this is also a good Iron Boulder game. But maybe I'm full of it. I'm doing it. I'm crazy. Um, they have one Dark type. But other than that... He's weak to Fairy also. And I don't want Torkoal because they've got a Flash Fire, I assume, on... Uh, 
Heatran. So I think this is correct. Dark type. Yeah, I agree. Dark type is like dork type. One of the, uh, for, for folks who are joining, one of the best selling points of Hatterian, the, the tall little lady that we've got, is that her same type attack bonus uh, of Psychic and Fairy is like basically unresisted by anything, I think. Because the only type that's immune to the Psychic is Dark, and that's weak to Fairy. Alright, we're going to cleave somebody right now. It's not even going to matter. I am largely unafraid. We're boosting out here. I think I just go for the Grim Snarl. He's probably going to try and clap me. Um, I would be very surprised if I don't get faked out here. But if he claps the Rabska, he's got a uh, Covert Cloak. Okay, cool. That's kind of what I thought. Okay. Articuno's coming in. That's cool. So we're going to send out Articuno, who's going to have Evasion, I'm guessing now. But I don't know that they really want to send in the Ice Flying Bird versus Big Cleaver. Oh, it's Great Tusk. Okay. Um. Okay, check this out. Hold on. Hear me out. We just click Expanding Force into this guy. And I think he just dies. As much as I want to go, like, crazy hyper offense. I think Great Tusk does not survive this. Oh, that does way less than I thought, actually. Okay, we're in trouble now, actually. <laughs> well, are we? I'm not sure. I think we're actually still fine. Yeah, because we got Trick Room up, right? So... All I have to do is... Switch around a little bit. Iron Boulder becomes you. And then Hatterene. We're going to Terra Steel. Dazzling Gleam. I don't think I needed to have Terra Steeled here, but it's fine. Indeed, he sets up the terrain. We are in Trick Room. So we get ourselves out of there. We're going to Terra Steel just in case. Um, but we should be totally fine here. He can't go for, like, a Sucker Punch. And D Gleam should knock out both of these guys. I would be very surprised if Dazzling Gleam, which hits super effective into both, uh, does not clear. Only case would be, like, if we get a Light Screen off on Grim Snarl, but even then I think we get rid of the... Um, okay, no, we, they don't. So we just clear. We're good. We're good. We're fine. I think I probably want to go defensively oriented on Rabska, since the attack wasn't doing any great shakes anyway. Um, but now I know. Like, I've got empirical data. I've got Boulder in the back for when Trick Room wears off, exactly. But I don't think we're going to make it to when Trick Room wears off, because here comes Articuno and uh, the Poison Guy. So I think we follow me in case he tries to do, like, some sheer cold shenanigans. And just start mas mashing a uh, uh, expanding force. I'd love to helping hand, but I'm worried that they're going to have some kind of goofy attack. And we should be able to eat like whatever they throw at us with our massive special attack. Okay, cool. Now you lose your defense bonus from uh, the the snow. I guess I don't know what that does for you. 
It doesn't make you resist any of the attacks I'm about to throw at you. Crushing. Okay. Disable. That's fine. I don't need another turn of follow me. And Sheer Cold? Show me Sheer Cold. Oh, wow. Water Terra Blast. That's going to do nothing. Big damage. Ooh. Whopping 30 damage. Okay, now I can go for the Helping Hand. And the Expanding Force. And we, we win easily. That actually worked out kind of fine in the end. I thought the Rapska going down was really bad. But, yeah, the, the only way they won there is if the snow gave Articuno uh, a miss. Um, Articuno's ability is Snow Cloak, which gives it a little boost to evasion in the snow. So their only chance there was uh, me missing my expanding force, which is possible uh, because of that interaction. And, like, the, the Terra Water did nothing. Like, I don't know. I can't believe... They must have had Blizzard or something, right? I don't know what... The, the, the Terra just didn't give them anything. Uh, okay. Goldengo, Mamoswine, so we got Grass. Um, got a good Steel user. Hmm. They've got a Terrain Setter, which is kind of rough. Um... I think we can try and go for... They don't have any weather, crucially. So I think something like... This kind of eats? I'm not sure if I want to bring Psychic Terrain, though. I feel like nah. So I'm just going to get invalidated by Rillaboom. Whereas this is like super effective... Torkoal is super effective into over half their team without Terra. Yeah, they needed me to miss, is the thing. They disabled follow me, but like I said, I only needed one turn of follow me, and that was just to cover for, like, a stray sheer cold or something like that. Eruption does go crazy here. Other than, like, whatever silly Terra they have. Uh, I don't want to bring Indeedee, because I don't really feel like playing Terrain Wars with them. Um, if they want to send out Grassy Terrain, like, sure. But I don't feel like it. Melodic and Mamoswine, Okay. So here's where the Terra Grass comes in real handy, I think. Because this guy's probably going to go for a ground move, if I had to guess. Into me. Um, and I th think... Does this do more or less because of Stab? I think this is just straight up stronger. We can go for the Trick Room. So I think Grass Terra is the right play here, because they're going to fire a Water and Ground move into me, if I had to guess. I'd be very surprised if he was shooting a nice attack at Iron Boulder's direction. Uh, but if he does, I guess that's on me. But I can otherwise resist two attacks that would otherwise be super effective from respective stab dealers. I'm faster anyway. Ooh, really close. Surf. Okay, we resist it, and he probably knocks himself out. Yeah, he knocks himself out. Perfect, so we get Trick Room up. That's awesome. Mamoswine didn't get to play. I don't know why you would use a spread move. Unless he had weakness policy, maybe? No, he didn't, because I just hit him super effective. I have no idea what the plan there was, actually. I, I'm thinking too hard in Pokeball. Now, my Lodic might have Ice Beam, which might be tricky for my Grass, uh, Terra. But I'm not sure how much that matters. Okay, they're going to try and fake me out here, I assume. Um, I think I can just go for the Protect. To just cover for the Fake Out. And meanwhile, this guy can't be faked out. So I probably just go for the... No, okay, hold on. I don't care if I get faked out, I think. Um, I need to try and go for the big damage move into you. Uh, and I need to go for the speed swap right now. Uh, this is the, the final ribbon uh, is my ranked master ribbon, which I can only get by getting to master ball, the highest rank. 
uh, in the ranked ladder here. It's the very final one. Oh, wow. This is really good if I don't get flinched, because he just terrored into something that's weak to the attack I'm about to fire off. And he didn't fake out. Okay. This guy's getting gamed on. Check this out. You get cleaved. <clears throat> I... I... Uh, poor guy. <laughs> I don't know why he did that. Tinkaton's probably going to do Gigaton Hammer, if I had to guess. Oh, knockoff. Okay. Robska doesn't even die to that. Even though it's super effective. That's awesome. And we've speed swaps now, so we're good. Rabska can go away. Like, it has, it has served its purpose. Uh, that said, it still has a little bit more gas in the tank, assuming it, it doesn't just die here, but it probably will. Um... I legit think I could just go for a Swords Dance, but that might be too greedy. I think I'm not respecting my opponent if I go for a Swords Dance. Like, raw Swords Dance in front of them. Would have knocked out, though, for sure. They just don't have any damage, though. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. I don't... I... I could have gone for the sword stance there, actually, in retrospect, but it, like, wouldn't matter. Um, and now Torkoal just cleans it up. So, another really cool thing about Speed Swap here, the, the gimmick that I just demonstrated. One is that, um, as we established, speed is dynamic um, in uh, this, this gen. And as of Gen 8, I think it's been like that. So, as soon as your speed stat changes, it updates the priority order, or the, the turn order, like, before moves even happen. Uh, but also, it's just a status condition that's cleared on Switch Out, right? So, if I get into a situation where, say, they reverse Trick Room or something really bad happens, I can just switch Iron Boulder back out, and he gets his speed stat back to what it was. Nailed by eruption. Uh, like, he's good to go. Um, and then I can go back to having a fast guy in the back. Like, I might have to sack, uh, like, uh, Lilligant or something, but then I've got Iron Boulder in the back. So we're good to go. All right, we're making it out of Pokeball with this one, right? We're doing it. I don't know what he was thinking with that Terrifier, though. I don't know why you do that into that particular matchup. Unless he was thinking I had, like, Terra Blast on Iron Boulder. But again, like, there's... I, nobody knows what Iron Boulder does. Nobody knows. Nobody's ever seen this Pokemon before. <laughs> But I, I, that's a textbook example um, of why I think the Terra Grass that we just updated this move, this uh, team with, is like phenomenally good because it let me stare down two guys who could hit me super effective and just not really care. Uh, all right, we got a Moongus, uh, Goldengo. This feels like a Indeedy uh, team, like expanding force team. I feel like I just lead with these two. And then, like, Torque fast in the back. I think. I think. They don't have any way to update terrain or weather other than, like, manual moves. I don't know if they have, you know, Rain Dance or Misty Terrain or something. Uh, Goldengo is kind of scary because of the spread steel move, but I do have Terra Steel for exactly that. But then I'm vulnerable to Earthquake um, from Garch. Card of War and Garchomp, okay. I am not afraid right now. So, he's going to use Earthquake. I have, um, Gar Guard of War has Telepathy, so she's not going to take any damage from, from that. Um, I don't think I care too, too, too much about that. Um, because we're going to turn one Trick Room on Hatterene, turn, uh, here, we're going to follow me. Just in case Guard of War fires off something. And we should be totally fine and just live this. Maybe he's going to, like, Terra Ground on Garchomp right away, because he's very afraid of the tremendous fairy damage we can do to him. Um, and maybe that is enough for a knockout. No, okay. No Terra. That's good. But he's definitely going to click Earthquake. There's no... Okay. That's fine. Okay. I like clicking follow me, like, it's cool. 
Also, I moved before they did, so actually I'm not locked into that. Uh, what I can do now, though, is uh, expanding force, which I think is the right play here. Because um, Garchomp... No, this is the right play, for sure. Um, and then we can click follow me, because I already moved. Or rather, helping hand, because we already moved. And this guy's not clicking Terra, so... <laughs> Have fun. And now I'm locked into help, Helping Hand, but, like, that seems really optimal, actually. This is gonna do nothing to me. I thought he was gonna Terra for sure. And, yeah, she can't, like, do the trick thing again because she doesn't have an item. I consumed my item. Okay. Now I Terra, because I'm afraid of that Spread Steel move. Um, and I click... I think if they're both not very effective, Expanding Force just does more damage. Um, and then I have... I'm locked into Helping Hand. Oh, I didn't... I didn't click Terra? I thought I did. Well, that's fine. Because I've got Torkoal in the back anyway. Oh, that does a lot of damage. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter if he knocks us both out here with uh, Make It Rain, because I've got Torkoal in the back. And he's down to the last two guys. Yeah, exactly, right? I'm locked into Helping Hand. Oh, no! <laughs> and I still have Helping Hand, because I'm so specially defensive. Oh, okay. It's fine. Like, this is actually probably even better. He's maybe going to send out Gyarados now. I'm going to hit, like, not very effective into it, but I can still Helping Hand, and now I can Terra Fire. So... Oh, it's a Moongus, okay. Good luck, have fun, bud. I don't think it's going to work out for you. You can Terra, but I don't think it's going to work out. They're, like, dead dead, yeah? They're... A Moongus is going to Terra Water, I'm pretty sure. But it's, like, not going to matter. Torkoal is slower than a Moongus can possibly ever be, so we're definitely moving first. They locked me into Helping Hand. Uh, thanks to the helpful speed interaction that we learned about, like, two games earlier, where if you get the choice item given to you uh, before, or after you use the move, you're free to choose a new move the next turn. Because Follow Me is such high priority, it went before Trick this time. Oh, he's got the Fire Berry! Nailed That's by cute. Eruption. It's not gonna help, dude. There's no way you survive this one. That's cute. I always love when people have the damage resist berries, because, like, the, the the art of Trick Room is figuring out, like, the, the art of this thing is figuring out how to do the most possible damage in the fewest number of button clicks. So it's like, oh, my Terra boosted, Charcoal boosted, Helping Hand boosted, Sun boosted eruption. Ah, oh, but I'll take, you know, half damage from that with the berry or whatever. And it's like, no, actually, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I'm surprised he didn't Terra. Um, I, usually Amoongus packs like Terra Water, because it's just a very good defensive typing. Alright, we're climbing the ranks here. What do we got next? Lewis, grade five. What do you got for me, Lewis? Oh, we got the dogs. He's got that dog in him. Okay, that's cool. Um, I don't think I want to lead with Iron Boulder because I just get faked out. Um, and like Intimidate and Parting Shot. Don't do me any favors here. I think this is just like a bog standard... Trick Room. Like, I don't see... Torkoal doesn't really do great here. Actually. It's a cool team to see. I don't really know what it does, though. Torkoal doesn't do amazing, because it, it's resisted by, like, half their team. Which is, like, not great. Um, Iron Boulder does kinda well.
but fake out turn one is like kind of obnoxious. Yeah, I think this is the right call. I might get clowned on here, but I mean, I don't, like, I've never seen, like, any of these guys do anything. So I have no idea what to expect. It's a learning experience for both of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Torkoal being resisted by Suicune and, uh, double resisted by Gouging Fire and Incineroar is really rough. I just didn't want to lead with Iron Boulder because uh, he'll get hit by, like, Intimidate and Fake Out. Like, right now, for example. But this combo is immune to that. Uh, the one thing that could possibly mess us up here is Parting Shot being cast into Hatterene. Uh, if you remember, so Parting Shot's a move where you lower your opponent's stats and then switch out without doing any damage. Uh, but if you remember, Hatterene has this cool thing where any status moves used against it, it instead casts back at the user. Uh, so what happens if you Parting Shot into Hatterene is Hatterene switches out forcibly. Uh, so I just need to click uh, follow me here and not let that happen as I set up Trick Room. And yeah, Raikou does get Skulled, it's true. So I just need to not let... Oh, Light Screen. Oh, we're in trouble, actually. Knock off. But I don't have an item, so I survive. I think I go for the Helping Hand... here... And then I just gotta click Eagle because Incineroar is immune to that shit. Yeah, I mean, like, what can you do, right? Close team feats. I don't have a good screens answer. Good crit. He's probably gonna parting shot into Hatterene now, right? Eats the berry. If I'm allowed to do that again, like, that's good for me. Yep, so now Hatterene gets forcibly switched out. That's exactly what I was talking about. So I cast it back at them, but that makes me switch out. Um, so who do I want to die here? It's not Iron Boulder, that's for sure, because we're in Trick Room. So I think it's got to be Rabsko. That's rough. Um, and they resist that, so I think I just gotta click this. The light screen really does mess with things, but that's cool. Uh, no, I think that was like Electro Ball. Zap Cannon would have killed me for sure. I'm just like not doing damage here. I'm getting knocked off, I'm sure. Yeah. Into that one, though. That's okay. Yeah, this is like Energy Ball or something. Nah, it's gonna knock me. Oh, no, I'm still alive. Okay. Okay, so Hattery can come in for one more rodeo, I think. And we've got what? Two turns of Trick Room and two turns of Psychic Terrain up, and I've barely done any damage to them. They're whittling away at me incredibly well. Um, but I think I might still be okay. Because um, we're going to go for another Dazzling Gleam. And another one of these. I'd love to kick click Expanding Force here, but I don't think it's the right move. Well, maybe it is. Um, no, this is definitely right. Yep, okay, I picked the right move. Thank you. So now I have one turn to click a uh, expanding force. And then after that, Iron Boulder can come in. <laughs> what do we got? And there's still like two more turns of um, the screen, unfortunately. But fortunately, when I've got my physical attacker in, they won't care. Okay, Cobalt. Or, uh, yeah, okay, okay. Cool. So now I click Expanding Force and definitely lower the special attack if I can help it. There goes Gouging Fire! <laughs> oh, it was a crit. That definitely matters, unfortunately. Uh, 
another. Okay, these crits actually really matter because <laughs> they go through screen. That doesn't even kill. Wow. Okay, but now both of my guys are getting knocked out. Well, one of them is. They can't target both of me. Because uh, expanding force doesn't work anymore either. He's cooked, cooked, yeah. Um, this is stronger. And I just click this again. He can't get both of us. Lowers that special attack even more. Iron Boulder, cleave this. I'm going to Terror Grass because I'm worried about him hitting me with the Steel-type move. I think I would survive it because um, he's super, super weak. But, like, I take neutral from Expanding Force and neutral from the other thing, so I see no reason to not just do this. Um, he's Steel, so he resists that. But with Stab, is it still better? I don't know. We're going to find out. I don't think he survives it either way. I'm actually not clicking Cleave this turn because he does he's a steel type. So he does resist it. I'm not sure. Because it, it's 95 base power but resisted but with stab. And the other one was just 90 base power not resisted. So I think the 90 power one is... Oh, but maybe he Terra's to something that doesn't resist it anymore. And I should have been big brain. Terra Psychic, right? Terra Steel... Oh, I get the super effective hit. I'm so smart. Okay, cool. Uh, he no longer resists Sacred Sword. I clicked the right move. There we go. I, I foresaw this in my mind's eye. I'm a genius. <laughs> awesome. That went great, actually. <laughs> I thought that was going to be really rough. But that went great. I saw that one coming for sure. Thank you, Lewis. Good game. There was like a 50-50 on if he Terra's Psychic or Steel there. Uh, psychic would have made my move do half damage and Steel made it do twice, and so he, he lost the 50-50. Thank you. Yeah, I got really lucky with a lot of crits, I will be honest. Lewis did kind of get cheesed there. Um, light screen got me pretty good. Now, of course, Boulder at the end doesn't care about that, but... For the time being, it was looking really rough. I actually don't know if I win without crits. I really don't think I do. Um, I would have to go back and do like a lot of different calculations, because I got, I think, three crits in that game. Uh, one with Expanding Force on Gouging Fire that just knocked it out clean. Um, one on Incineroar that made it eat its berry, and then one with Rabska with, um, uh, Struggle Bug onto the Psychic-type Iron Crown. Through, all of these through screens. All of them special moves, so I think they mattered. Alright, Janus, what do you got? Oh, now this is a team. Okay, this is, like, a team team. See ya, Fuba. Um... We finally hit the tier where people have, like, balance. Um, I think I just do like this, though. I think. I don't know what kind of Urshifu that is. Um... I think I want these guys. If I'm in the back with Iron Crown, I don't actually... I think I don't need Rabska here. I was also thinking it's probably dark. So we'll see. Maybe me bringing three Psychic types to this is a bad idea. We're going to find out real quick. 
I'm assuming he's going to lead with Amoongus, and... Oh, no, okay. Not what I expected. So it is Dark Ursh, which is a bummer, but not unworkable. No, that's definitely true. Um, I think we're still, like, totally fine. Um, I click... Dazzling Gleam. And I click... Follow me. No, what am I saying? Because I need to set up Trick Room. Oh, that's kind of a pain, actually. Um, click. Trick Room. Now, fl watch Fluttermane have him prison. Um, I die to the bear for sure here. That's okay. As long as I get Trick Room up, we're, like, in good shape. They don't switch out into Rillaboom yet, which is cool. Eucleam do does a lot of damage, actually. And Wicked Blow seals the deal. That's fine. The Trick Room goes up. I have no idea if he's, like, banded, though. I have, like, no idea what hold item this guy has. That, uh... Dazzling Gleam did, like, a lot more than I would expect. Torkoal can come in. Do you get a speed boost? That would be cool. Yep, speed boost on Flutter. Um, so we click Dazzling Gleam, I think. Actually, a Terra Steel here. I don't know if it's going to matter. This might be a big throw. We're going to do... <clears throat> trying to decide if I just want more damage on Eruption. If that's like the play here. But they can't Sucker Punch. Unless they swap out uh, Flutter Main for Rillaboom now. Well, I, I didn't listen to you, unfortunately. I don't know why I did this. I should have gone Terrifier. I'm faster than both of them, so in Trick Room. There was no reason for me to do this. This is a misplay, like objectively. I was thinking I'm, I need to possibly... Sur the Flutter Main might survive because it's two special attacks. Ursh definitely wasn't going to. Um... There we go, okay. So I was thinking if I get Dazzling Gleamed again, I would just die, whereas I can resist it now. And now I can also resist a future Sucker Punch. Now Rillaboom comes in, right? For sure. And resets the terrain and Grassy Glides me, right? 100%, right? Ogre Pond, okay. And it's Water Pond, so it takes neutral. I think I just clicked the same buttons again. Did they not bring Rillaboom to this somehow? Because, like, the only thing they could do here would be swap out, I guess, um, Ogre Pond for Rillaboom or swap out Ursh for Rillaboom here to be able to. But if they. Uh, I don't know. I don't think they got a good move here. I think that's a misplay, but we'll see. I definitely should have Terrored Fire, th uh, though. We'd be in a lot better shape if I had Terror Fire right now. Instead of a defensive Terra. Alright, Spiky Shield. They must have Rillaboom in the back, is my best guess. But this Ursh is, like, dead dead. <laughs> Yeah, like you said, Sash. So Ogre Pond is probably going to Terra next turn to get a special defense boost and fully resist... Um, what do you call it? Uh, fully resist Eruption. But then I can click Expanding Force unless they send in Rillaboom right now, which I'm sure they're going to. Nope, okay. We're good, we're in the clear. Um, so now I can click Expanding Force into Ogre Pond and Eruption again, and we should just be totally fine. I don't know why they didn't bring Rillaboom to reset the terrain. They needed they needed to remove Psychic Terrain very badly, and they had a tool to do it. 
um, but they didn't seem to bring it. I would Again, I'd expect Ogre Pond to Terra. They're going to become pure water type and get plus one special defense, which is good for them here. Um, but the amount of damage I have right now is like overwhelming. Yeah, you bring... Like, I've got Manual Psychic Terrain as my fourth move on uh, Hatterene for just such an occasion. That's what I was prepared to have to do. Um, I sh again, I should have Terrored Fire here. The steel didn't end up mattering at all. Um, but... What can you do? Alright. So Amoongus can't put me to sleep. Um, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just does enough damage. Cool. That worked out great. I think you're probably right. They're probably just practicing with this team. So, uh, you know, stick with it. And I'm sure you'll figure it out. Yeah, no, I'm not, like, worried about it. My, my thought process was... I don't know if these two large special attacks knock out Flutter Main because it's got a tremendous amount of special defense. Uh, and if it survived and got off another Dazzling Gleam, I had just witnessed it do 50% damage to my Hatterene. Um, so I was thinking, Urshifu like, almost certainly goes down if I get both of my moves off here. Um, if it doesn't protect, or then it protects and it doesn't doesn't hit me at all. But there's a chance that both of my moves going off don't knock out Flutter Main and then it degleams me and kills Hatterene, uh, is what I was thinking. Um, but then conversely, if I had more power with my Terra Fire Eruption, maybe it would have done enough damage that that wouldn't matter anyway. Yeah. That that was the thought process there. just wanted to explain it in case people... Oh, I'm at uh, Master Ball. Um, I'll probably play like one or two more. Jorge, what do you got? Okay, screens, we got bears, we got Arcalidon, my old nemesis. This is going to be a tough one. Um, this is definitely a tough one. I think it's time to try a mode that I haven't personally run yet, but I've in theory sounds good. Um... I don't know that Torque really cooks anybody here. But neither does Rabska, so. I'm gonna get really greedy, and I'm probably gonna pay for it, but like I don't know, I don't have a better idea. I'm gonna try and lead with Indeedy uh Iron Boulder and get up a swords dance instead of going for Trick Room. Ursh and Flutter, okay. And it's single strike Ursh. I don't think I can actually go for that uh swords dance after all. Um, I think I got a... This is tricky, actually. This is, like, not ideal. I do got to follow me. Um, definitely dies to Urshifu here. I think you're right. I think that is the call, actually. Right, he's going to tear a poison on his Urshifu. Check this out. Terra Dark, okay. Doesn't need it, but that's fine. Now hopefully the Flutterman is faster, and he I get a, I get to eat a Shadow Ball, does nothing, and now Urshifu will kill my Ndidi with Wicked Blow. I'm faster than his Ursh, which is good to know. We've lost Flutterman. Uh, and I'm faster than Urshifu. That's really good to know. This is going to kill, but that's okay. Um.
Oh, okay, Ogrepon's got that. Follow me. That's fine. Um... Water pawn. Like a jolly hat lives a wicked blow. I was thinking I could Terra here, but I think I'm just gonna keep throwing bodies at this thing. I'm gonna Terra Grass like that. Because I'm faster than it. So it's not jolly. Um, because I I was faster than it, I'm pretty sure. We're gonna find out. I could have Terra Steel here. I'm assuming Ogre Pond's gonna use follow me and redirect. My attack anyway. Um, and I, he's going to knock out one of my guys either way. Okay, we resist that, which is really good for me. Does not follow me. We Oh, we don't kill the Ursh. Who does he shoot this into? The boulder. Okay, we're good. We're good, actually. We're actually in good shape, I think. I thought uh, Sacred Sword would have killed, though. I'm actually surprised I didn't get the one-hit knockout. He did the needful, yeah. Um, now I've got Torkoal. So we reduced the power of that Water-type Ivy Cudgel. Um, but I think what I want to do here... Okay, check this out. I need to Terra... Oh, no, I already terra Shoot, okay. Um, we're fine. Um, trick room, and we're going to protect on Torkoal. Cool. I don't think Flash Cannon kills on Hat. I might be wrong. Doesn't use it anyway. Oh, they both go for the Torkoal. They're so scared. And I get the free trick room up. Okay, we're fine now. Okay, that went better than I could have possibly hoped for. I was banking on surviving a flash cannon from the um, Duraludon, but instead I can just click Expanding Force and Eruption. And now we're, we've got Trick Room up, we're in the sun, we're in Psychic Terrain. We click our two funniest possible buttons and do the maximum possible amount of damage. Yeah, so we, we were able to hold our hand till it was the final 2v2. Oh, okay, so Arcaliodon's going to eat a single target boosted expanding force now because Ogre Pond did not have access to Terra. Couldn't survive Nailed that one. By eruption. And expanding force. Oof. That felt good. I feel like I played that pretty well. I got lucky with what the guy was targeting, but I also kind of called it for the most part. Um, the Terra on Boulder was absolutely the correct call, because I needed to survive two very critical hits there and, and land a lot of damage on the Urshifu. Um, I thought he was going to Terra Poison, which would have been tricky, but it would have made him vulnerable to Expanding Force later. Uh, whereas, like, so, Single Strike Urshifu is a fighting dark type, which means it's doubly weak to Fairy, uh, but it's immune to Psychic. So a lot of people will Terra Poison on it to resist Fairy. Then you become weak to Psychic, but nobody's going to fire a Psychic move in you anyway. Um, so I was banking on that, but the Terra Dark for more damage um, didn't didn't really come into picture. And we got to see that my Boulder, despite being adamant nature, was faster than this Urshifu. Uh, which is part of the reason why I picked Boulder over Ursh also. Because I wanted it to be the fastest it could possibly be uh, before Speed Swap and without having an item locked in. Um, I think I'm good for the evening. I guess it's tempting to try and uh, push fate a little bit and get that like last pip over. Um, but my current record is 8-1. and one. Terra Stellar would have been cool too, but it wouldn't have mattered too much because I would have just clicked my fairy move the next turn. Uh, which is what ended up knocking him out anyway. Uh, like even if he didn't Terra there, uh, Sacred Sword is still super effective because uh, he's still a dark type either way. So, um, that would have been fine. Anyway, it's, it's been like a good two hours. I think that's going to be it for me. Um, let me pop my mask off.
Uh, nine battles is kind of a lot in a row. I don't have a ton of endurance, but we did pretty well today. Uh, I think I got to show off what Iron Boulder is all about. I will probably make a rental team for this if you want it. Just, you know, ping me. Um, actually, let's do that right now. Let's let's put this guy on this team on rental if you want to play it yourself. Um, rental teams. Uh, nice demo of the characteristics, right? That's what I'm saying. Um, here we go. Trick room. we go. So if you are interested in playing this... Oh, I don't know why it says Little Cup. That's not correct. This is not my Little Cup team. Uh, if you are interested in playing this team... Oh, my trap box is blocking part of it. Uh, hold on. We're going to go to my other scene. Here. If you want to play this team yourself... Uh, there's the ID in the top left, or top right, sorry, I can't say anything. N P N B G 7. Uh, you can type that into your game. It'll let you download this team and play with them on the battle ladder. You can do all the funny strategies that you saw me do, uh, except don't do the ones that didn't work. Um, you've got a fast lead with Iron Boulder that can really catch people by surprise. Um, you can try and do what I was going to do that last game, which is lead with either Rabska or Indeedee. Uh, the Indeedee lets you redirect a move while you get a Swords Dance up, and then you can kind of sweep with speed. But I'm seeing the problem with that is that once Indeedee goes down, you don't have anything to replace it with that is uh, quick enough for that to matter. Uh, like, then Iron Boulder is really kind of an island, so I don't think that's optimal as a way to play. Uh, hi, Youthless. My birthday is tomorrow. Um, but I appreciate the well wishes all the same. I won't be streaming tomorrow. I'm going to be taking it easy tomorrow. My next stream is going to be Friday. Probably starting about an hour earlier than the time it is right now. I'm going to be playing Ape Escape 2, which is the first game I ever streamed three years ago. Uh, those streams are lost media now. I don't have the video recorded for them. And even if I did, they were very crunchy. I was playing on a much weaker setup. So I I was dropping frames. You know, it was, it was, it was amateur hour. Uh, so we're going to come back to those and have a good time. Um, but tomorrow's my birthday. I'm looking forward to it. I'm, it's my third year of streaming. My anniversary are there as well. Um, so it's very happy to see everybody. Let me let me go back to my talking stream. Ape Escape 2 is one of the greatest, I agree. Um, and then, so we got our cool team here. Um, so if you're interested in this at all, you know, feel free to pop it down. I'm actually legit thinking now, after like sitting through this a bunch of times, that maybe Swords Dance I can swap out for uh, Psycho Cut on... Iron Boulder, which would be another stab move that gets boosted in Psychic Terrain. But I feel like I don't need more Psychic moves uh, between the two... Uh, what do you call it? Expanding Forces. I don't know. We'll see. But this was fun. Uh, I did pretty well today, which is good for my nerves and my, my mental well-being. Uh, so that's going to do it for me. Let's see. I'm going to find somebody to raid real quick. I'll catch you guys on Friday. Uh, and God willing, I will still be running Locals, I think, on Thursday. Uh, those aren't like a VTuber stream like this. I can't provide commentary. But every Thursday, approximately, I go and host like a Pokemon LAN for my local players. And we have a good time there. I always, I always stream it. Um, if you've got, you know, chat going, but I can't give commentary because I'm sitting next to the players while I'm streaming it. And I don't want to give them, you know, advice that they shouldn't be privy to. Uh, but that'll be on Thursday. Starts at 7 p.m. Eastern, assuming all goes as planned. And then Friday at 7, I will be back at it with Ape Escape. Um, so who's around right now? Who's good? Um, blah, blah, blah. What's happening? Hmm. Give me one second. I, I gotta look at all my possible options. There's, there's a bunch of people streaming right now, as you might be uh, unsurprised to learn. It's kind of prime time. Um, who do we want to send you all to? I think I'm sending you to recently recent acquaintance, new person that you haven't been sent to before by me. Uh, Lily B W E E S. I'm gonna send you guys to uh, Lily. She's currently streaming Hollow Cure. Um, I met her by way of talking about Pomu before Pomu was graduated. Um, so we are friends by Mutual Oshi, I guess. Um, so you can go tell her how cool Pomu Rainpuff is, if you like Pomu Rainpuff. She's playing Hollow Cure right now. 
Um, so if you think VTubers are cool, go say hi to them. If not, I understand. Um, but I'll talk to you when I talk to you. See you guys on Thursday and Friday. Good night, bonus era, and goodbye. Thank you.